and welcome back on Primetime Watchmaking in the News. And as you can expect, we're up for a new heavy edition. Quite a lot of things have happened during this holiday period. So quite a few things to be shared with you, but mostly business related as brands are holding to their new timepieces for the upcoming shows. And of course, the main one being the Geneva Watch Days happening here at the end of the month. But we'll also talk about a few interesting auctions, some other watchmaking events and uh, shows to come, but also some pure business slash numbers to be shared. So yes, we also took it a little bit uh, easy this summer, or let's say easier, and we haven't published many videos on this channel, but that's quite, uh, but that's because we spent quite some time on Horopedia. But just to remind you that we recently published a video on the epic collaboration of Fourlan Mari, Julien Tixier, and Dominique Renault for the only watch auction, which will take place uh, in Geneva in November. So the team created a secular perpetual calendar, which is per se a very rare watch complication, but the genius of Dominique Renault has made it to the next level with only 25 components for this in-house patented module, including five for the secular module itself. So do watch our interview with them to know more about it because it's quite a statement of technical watchmaking prowess by the young brand that we know more for their cool and rather affordable watches. And now back to business and let's start with the biggest show of the coming days, the Genie Watch Days, which will take place here from August the 29th till to September the 2nd. An event created in 2020 by a committee of brand as an answer to the fact that major Swiss watch shows have all been, had all been cancelled due to COVID pandemic and it gained quite some popularity along the way. It is uh, no doubt a very interesting show where brands can present uh, new models before the winter season and all the holidays. And it's also, it also attracts a lot of collectors and parties are not bad either, but uh, that's a side note. So as an industry salon, it was founded by eight watch brands, Breitling, Bulgari, De Bethune, Girard Perigo, H. Moser and company, MBNF, Ulis Nardin and Overk. And the goal was to create a modern and close customer, retailer and media uh, experience while avoiding the complexity of a big show. So this is why uh, it's quite decentralized and all participating brands are showcasing their watches at venues around the city or in their boutiques. But you also have a main tent uh, by the lake regrouping all the brands too. So unlike Watches and Wonder, the Genia Watch uh, Days is also a place to see a lot of independent names uh, showcasing their latest releases. In fact, uh, this year the show has expanded and is now hosting nearly 40 watch brand and it will probably get bigger and bigger. So there will also be different roundtables concerning the industry topics uh, such as workforce uh, shortage, innovations in retail and new names on the market. On Wednesday morning, the 30th of August, uh, the Salon is organizing a special breakfast session with seven CEOs, Antoine Pain from Bulgari, Claude Greisler from Armstrong, George Kern from Breitling, Christian Ferrier from Laurent Ferrier, Vincent Perriard from the uh, Origin Foundation, Niels uh, Egerding uh, from Frédéric Constant, and Patrick Pruneau uh, representing Ulysse Nardin and uh, GP. So definitely an opportunity uh, not to miss for young watchmakers or those who would like to start their career in watch making. I mean, you have some good names there. So speaking of opportunities and quickly talking about Horopedia, I am delighted to announce that the foundation is also an official partner of the Geneva Watch Days and we will have our own booth at the main pavilion. So don't be shy and come over if you're in Geneva. And still on Wednesday the 30th, Horopedia will hold a press conference coming back on what has been achieved so far, where we're heading and some additional really positive news. So you can find all the details on the foundation's LinkedIn page, link below. And plus, uh, during the gala cocktail of the Genia Watch Days, the foundation will contribute uh, along with the organizing committee and the show of, of the show and uh, Philips in association with Bax and Russo to the special private auction held on the evening of the 30th. And the lots put on sale are not timepieces, but let's say more experience driven. So for instance, Bulgari will offer a special two night stay in Rome where we'll be able to discover the secret Bulgari spots of the eternal city. Breitling uh, will invite two people to assist the Manchester City game, meet the Norwegian mountain Erling Arland and get a signed jersey. 
Konstantin Chaikin offers a limited edition hoodie with a dedicated drawing of the dial face found on that hoodie. Ulrich will offer a unique pen and ask Martin Fry to draw something special for you. Well, there are more other cool lots and I guess you get the idea. But very importantly, all proceedings from the sales will go to support the students from the Geneva Watchmaking School, something obviously dear to the Foundation's mission. And once again, all info will be found on the Horopedia website and on our LinkedIn page. And uh, when I said private sale, well, I meant that only people attending the auction will be able to bid, no online bidding. And you simply need to be invited to assist and participate, so not too complicated, a part of being in Geneva, of course, on that occasion. I will only add that the Geneva Watch Days will be open to the public free of charge on September the 1st and the 2nd, including guided visits and uh, roundtables. As you see, the end of August will be quite intense for the local watchmaking scene, but this summer was quite busy for the whole industry with some uh, promising numbers regarding performance of groups during the first semester. LVMH published a report on their results for the first half of 2023 and for the Arnaud family it was an excellent six months with a total recorded revenue of over 46 billion US dollar which is 15% higher than for the same period in 2022 but that's for the entire behemoth and for the watches and jewelry division in particularly uh, Tiffany, Bulgari and Tiger the re revenue was almost 6 billion which is still 13% uh, higher than a year ago but you do have to take into consideration that LVMH doesn't really disclose detailed breakdown of these numbers and naturally uh, the part of jewelry represents the vast majority. I mean it's clear that watch brands are not the key players here but if we take into account all the rumors we heard about LVMH recently well it really seems that they are pushing hard with their multiple watchmaking brands. Regarding Richmond they reach an overall revenue of uh, 5.8 billion US dollars in the first quarter of their fiscal year meaning from April uh, through to June and this represents a total of 14% of sales growth compared to 2022 with 6% of growth only in specialist watchmakers. And if we look at the numbers it is clear that the strong rebound of the Asia Pacific market played a great role in such an increase. The same goes for the Swatch Group with their net sales of 4.5 uh, and something billion and total growth of 18% but this time we're talking the full first semester of 2023 compared to the same period of 2022. So lifting of Covid restriction on the Asian market has boosted the group's performance and increased the operating, uh, operating margin to 19.4% compared to 15.7% in the previous year. So not at the same level of LVMH yet but Swatch is apparently doing better amid some rumors of the, some changes in the management and uh, well with the Swatch brand itself they really seem to revive it based on the success of the Moon Swatch and now coming with their latest uh, square ceramic model and some pretty funky movies to accompany this launch. Anyhow it appears that they see excellent uh, growth opportunity for the second half of 20, uh, 2023 in all region and well we'll see if this happens. And my guess is that this forecast might be quite accurate since the Swiss watch export is so far continuously growing but with a slower pace that uh, was expected by some. So the report of the Federation of the Swiss watchmaking uh, industry states that the first half of the year had a steady growth in exports of 11.8% compared to the same period of 2022. So not bad indeed and mostly and not surprising it went to Thailand over 40% growth, Hong Kong, Ireland, Turkey, China and India and once again and as we predicted several months ago it will be a good year but not necessarily as record-breaking as the previous one especially that we hear about some product assortments that were until not long, uh, not long ago unattainable and now stock seems to be quite full on some uh, points of sales. So we've also witnessed the decline on the secondary market of the value of certain pieces that were considered super hot commodities commodities so this uh, could be indeed the early signs of a kind of a change uh, market dynamic and time will tell. And on that note and corroborating this uh, our friends at the Mercury project have also published a very interesting report regarding the results of the first semester in watch auctions. So we've been talking before this uh, this year uh, that it might not be as spectacular as the last one regarding sales and now we have the financial proof of such a decline. Anticorum, Bonhams, Christie's, Philips and Sotheby's reached a total value of uh, 356 million US dollar but it's 18% less compared to the same period of 2022. So despite the spectacular world record sales of Philips in Minbay with 47.6 million US dollar over one auction weekend. Well last year was truly exceptional for the second hand watch market uh, with the intensity of sales, rarity of lots and politically uh, heated desire to invest 
aka spend money. And the average price of lots sold remained high with the, uh, with the rise of millionaire lots, compensating the decline in the six-figure segment. Coming back to the Mercury project, just one more thing to add, and it's on a slight shift in the collector's taste. High quality timepieces from Patek, uh, Rolex and FP Journe are keeping uh, the first lines of the ranking. Uh, but then we see a surging demand growth for Breguet watches, which gained 10 ranks. And one new name on the list is uh, Roger Smith, the British traditional watchmaker, who took uh, the sixth rank straight away and this achieved only with a few timepieces sold. So all this shows that collectors prefer not to risk their investment in the long run, which is quite understandable seeing the volatile market. So for example, prices on most sought after Rolexes, APs and Nautilus uh, from Patek have already dropped by 16.3% in the last year, according to Bloomberg and the Subdial Market Overview. It is the correction that we've been talking about for a while now. However, it has clearly not yet reached the level to bounce back and I wouldn't be surprised to see prices continue to drop. All in all, a better time to, uh, to buy, but not to sell. Okay, enough uh, with the numbers, uh, let's now talk show announcements. So Watches and Wonders has disclosed its dates for 2024 and at the same time introduced some innovations. So the fair will take place from April the 9th till the 15th, with the first four days reserved for trade visitors and press. And following the success of this year, the organizing committee decided as well to extend the public visits to three days until April the 15th, including the Monday, and apparently reserved for watchmaking students. There will also be different activities in the city, uh, with celebration, workshops, and exhibitions placed around Geneva. And with the expansion of the participating brands, uh, which we mentioned in our previous primetime edition, well, this might become a huge tourist attraction, but as always, with uh, some things left to be improved, I mean, there's always played for improvement. And we heard about another show that will take place in the UK next year, with the goal to become the biggest one in the country. British Watchmakers Day is organized by the Alliance of British Watch and Clockmakers to showcase all major British watch brands in one place. Over 30 names have already been confirmed, including Roger Smith. And the event will take place on Saturday the 9th of March at uh, Lindley Hall in Westminster. So it is good to know that such shows are emerging in the country, rich in watchmaking history, and it might become a good tradition to celebrate uh, Watchmakers Day, maybe sometimes even in Switzerland, who knows? But anyhow, it should be a great opportunity to see some uh, nice quality timekeepers and meet passionate watchmakers in person. Coming back to Switzerland and uh, closer on the timeline, a more technical show will take place in La Chaux de Fonds in mid-September, the fourth edition of the Technical Watchmaker Show, which will be held from September the 12th to the 15th and dedicated to the watchmaking and micro-technology professions. It is of course smaller than the, than the APHG, which we covered in June, and uh, yet I like the fact that it's assembling most local brands and suppliers, access uh, on the site is free and however, I mean, you will have to register on the website in advance. We have more show announcements to come and we'll expand on this in our next prime time. But here's a quick list of what you can expect. First, the CR to be held in Mexico City between the 17th and 19th of October. Definitely the largest show in Latin America. Watch Time New York between the 20th and the 22nd of October. And more, and more or less at the same dates, the Singapore Watch Fair, which comes with a new and larger format between the 17th through till the 22nd of October. So yes, quite an intense month there. And let's not forget to mention the Dubai Watch Week, which will take, which will take place at the end of November. I mean, we all love these fine examples of watchmaking celebrations. So let's talk auctions now with uh, first a special auction dedicated to only one brand or a name in contemporary watchmaking planned in Geneva on August the 29th and occurring during the Geneva Watch Days. This will be a Constantine Chaking themed auction. Chaking, who recently introduced his most complicated watch to date with 16 complications for the only watch sale. So in collaboration with Inaition Auctioneers, Chaking will present a total of 15 lots among them are limited editions of the Smilodon and Joker 5, the Turbio 55 table clock, uh, Minions, a set of one-night time eaters made in collaboration uh, with Louis Hera, and a prototype of a completely new wristmon in a Joker theme. So the same uh, theme goes to the most extraordinary lot of the sale, the Joker watch coffee table crafted by the talented metal artisan Pedro Costa. And he already made similar table with uh, Jacob & Co Godfather as well as AP Royal Oak. 
a bit of an eccentric piece of furniture, but for the fans, well, you know how to uh, complement the looks of your living room with this. And yes, I am wearing a special version of the Joker. That's the one Chaking did in collaboration uh, with Chinese brand Bairns. Okay, not the real full thing, but nevertheless, a quite, a, quite a cool summary watch and obviously slightly cheaper. Still in the business news segment, I just wanted to add something quite interesting. Frédéric Constant, the Swiss watch brand with a Dutch background, has finally decided to leave the smart watch competition. So their approach wasn't one like, let's say, Tiger Heuer with a fully digital piece, but more of a traditionally looking watch with some smart watch function. Well, now its CEO, Niels Egerding, recently confirmed this in an interview with Swiss newspaper Le Temps, something which we had mentioned, uh, which, which he had mentioned to us uh, during the last uh, Watches and Wonder. And I fully agree on the fact that the market for a smartwatch wrapped in the sophisticated case of the highly uh, quality timepiece is quite narrow. And it is not the first time that we say that a proper watch brand can't possibly compete with the famous electronic watches, or better say, multifunctional wrist tools. And a proper watch is a piece of art in uh, every way and has a soul which can't be replaced by an electronic dummy. And it's probably a good idea for the brand to focus on their in-house movements, including the ones featuring super high-tech oscillator using uh, ultra high frequency thanks to use of compliant mechanics. So I find this uh, much more distinctive than going the smart watch route. And lastly, regarding this segment, well, I don't know if you've heard about it, but La Chaux de Fonds, one of the main watchmaking hub in Switzerland in terms of manufacturing, has been hit on the 24th of July by a massive storm. A storm that kind of appeared from nowhere, and in a matter of minutes, wind rose to more than 200 kilometers per hour and caused huge destruction, including, uh, sadly, one death with a crane uh, which fell on a car. But this has had uh, nasty consequences on some of the companies located there, for instance, Elita, the movement manufacturer, for whom their facilities got seriously damaged during the storm. So it really left the population understandably shocked and reconstruction is currently ongoing. But this uh, fury will have some consequences on the supply chain of some uh, local companies, that's for sure. Okay, let's now talk timepieces. But as mentioned, there weren't that many exciting things coming out during this summer, as many brands are holding up to them uh, that, and they will soon be uh, presented during these uh, various uh, upcoming shows. But, and since we're slightly in the know, I can already tell you that there are some pretty wicked pieces to be unveiled soon. Yes, uh, so stay tuned for sure, and actually a few might be unveiled between the moment we recorded this prime time and its publication today. Nevertheless, we can mention Grubel Force with two watches. It took them to, uh, quite some time to come up with these new pieces, but let's say the wait was quite worth it. Both are like the elite sports car, uh, which you can wear on your wrist and illustrate rather explicitly the sporty direction the brand has taken in the last couple of years. The limited edition double balancier convex in titanium has a hand-wound movement with two patterns. So this sophisticated uh, mechanical movement consists of 371 parts, which two coaxial series couple fast rotating barrel, one of which is equipped with a slipping spring to avoid excess tension. The titanium case measures 42.5 mm with a height of 13.75 mm and it looks quite bold on the wrist despite the fact that it was specially designed to be uh, fitted under a uh, sleeve. But difficult to hide such a piece and I guess, I mean, you want to show it. So the second timepiece, the Convex S2 Balance, comes in a new smaller and thinner titanium case of 41.5 mm, the smallest diameter ever designed by Gribble Force, and the entire case is curved both at the front and at the back and it's very ergonomic on the wrist and you have a perfect view of the inner mechanism with this uh, in-house variable inertia balance wheel with six gold mean time screws. Both watches have a power reserve of 72 hours and vibrate at uh, 21,600 vibrations per hour. And uh, quickly talking about Gribble Force, well, they unveiled their plan uh, for their manufacturer expansion and it's quite impressive. So the modern building will be revamped from 2,000 to 5,460 square meter, which will enable them to develop new in-house skills, strengthen its uh, research and development units, and gradually increase production capacities. So the new building will encompass the existing structure and should become fully operational by 2026. And there will be a VIP area, a lounge, a museum, and a restoration work shop design to pass on the brand's skills and legacy, so quite a bold move there. 
So there we go, we finally made it and we reached the end of this prime time, uh, the August edition, uh, which is of course available as a podcast. And as I said, plenty of cool things coming shortly and we'll do our very best to cover this as much as possible. And if you're in Geneva during the Geneva Watch Days, well, don't hesitate, don't hesitate to drop by our Horopedia booth in the main tent by the lake where we'll be able to explain you in person all about it. And for info, we asked uh, uh, the Genia Watchmaking School to be next to us, uh, where students will perform demonstration. It's always interesting, yeah, interesting to see this in real. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for the cool interaction uh, we had together. And immense thanks to our patrons. And see you real soon. Until then, well, viva watchmaking!